Welcome to this free Traction Waveform Basics course. I'm Zane, Traction Certified Guru, and in this mini course, we're going to go over all of the basics from setting up your audio interface, we're going to do some audio recording, MIDI recording and working with MIDI, plus we'll get into arranging your clips and editing your clips to form your song. Plus we'll look at plugins, so using effects and instrument plugins, rendering your song down or exporting it so you can have it on your computer and listen to it over and over again. You can share it with your friends or your fans or social media, whatever it is you want to do with your audio. So let's jump in with the basics of setting up our audio interface. And this can be pretty straightforward, but there are some things that you might want to know about. So when you first open Traction Waveform, you're probably going to come to this screen here, the welcome screen. I like to go to settings and then I go to the audio devices tab right here. And if you're on a Windows computer, you should install the ASIO drivers for your audio interface. These aren't the drivers that install by default as soon as you connect your audio interface to your computer. These are drivers that you need to install manually by going to the manufacturer's website for that audio interface downloading those drivers and installing them on your computer. They give you much better latency. If you haven't installed the ASIO driver for your audio interface yet, be sure to do that. If you're on Mac, you don't need to worry about this step. That's just a Windows thing. So in here, once you install the ASIO driver, you wanna to go to audio device type, click that and make sure you click on ASIO. If you don't have that driver, then you can try one of these other, like I would go with the Windows Audio low latency mode, not so much this exclusive mode, but the low latency mode, that's the one I would try, but definitely try this first if you can, ASIO. Then you wanna go to your device. So you would click here and you would find your audio interface in here and click on that. Once that's done, you can change the sample rate and typically 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz are the most popular. I like to use the 48 kilohertz, but you can go with one or the other, or if your audio interface supports a higher one and you want to work with that higher one, then you can do that. But just note, it does use more CPU power and it uses a lot more hard drive space as well. So if you want to go with those higher settings, you can give them a try or just go with 48 kilohertz or 44.1 kilohertz, whatever you like there. Audio buffer size. When you're recording, you want that to be as small as possible. Now I have it set to this FL Studio ASIO. That's usually what I have it set at when I'm doing my videos, but I'll switch it over to my Mbox. Then I'll click on this and you can see Eight samples is the lowest. I might want to try that, or I might just want to go with 16. Typically anywhere between here and even 128 is going to be fairly low and not cause trouble with your timing. I like to usually go between eight and 32. 64 max is what I'll go to, but all audio interfaces are different and computers are different. So not all computers are going to be able to handle all of these settings. So if you go with the lowest one and you start playback or recording and you notice some weird stuff happening, some stuttering, maybe it just doesn't play back at all, or you can see the CPU is skyrocketing, something like that, then you want to come back here and increase this, maybe go to the next one up. So if you start off with eight, then go to 16 and try that out. If that doesn't work, then you go to 32 and you continue to do that until you find the lowest buffer size that you can possibly use. So I'm just going to set that to 16 here and you can see it says it's 0.3 milliseconds, which really isn't that bad. It's not going to be noticeable when you're playing. Now, some other things to note on this screen about setting up your audio interface. There's this line over here and everything above this line, those are your outputs. Everything below this line, those are your inputs. And you can see if I click on this here, this is my output three and four. And I have this set to treat as stereo channel pair, which means my outputs 
three and four are going to be a stereo pair, which is great if I want to set up another set of studio monitors, then I can have two sets of studio monitors set up and they're going to be in stereo. Or if I want to output that to a stereo audio effect, like a stereo compressor, EQ, multi-effect, whatever, I can do that. But if I didn't want those to be a stereo pair, then I would just uncheck that. And now you can see I have three and four as separate. And if yours are all set as separate, but you do want them to be stereo, then all you do is just click on the first one here out of the two. So out of three and four, I'll click on three, go back down here, treat a stereo pair, and you can see it's a stereo pair again. And you can do the same thing with your inputs. So if you're going to be recording in stereo, maybe a stereo synthesizer connected directly to your audio interface, or you have a pair of stereo microphones and you want to record in stereo, then you could do the same thing. You would go to maybe input one and maybe you want that to be a stereo pair one and two. So you click on that and then go down here to treat as stereo pair. And you can see that's now a stereo pair. And to undo that, I just click here. So sometimes you might want to record in stereo. That's how you will do it because when we get to the tracks in our project, there isn't a difference between tracks. You can have stereo clips and mono clips on any track. Another thing you might want to just have a look at is the bit depth for your inputs. So I have it set to 24 bit, which is what I want. If yours was set to something else and not what you want, you might want to click there and change it to one of the other options in there. And file format again, I wouldn't worry about any of this other stuff in here, but file format, if for some reason you want it to be something different, you could click there and change that. Another kind of handy thing in here is you can change the alias. So say I always have a specific microphone connected to input one, and maybe it's the Shure SM7B. So I could just say this is the Shure SM7B, click enter. And now when I go into my project and I select my input, it would be called Shure SM7B. And that way I know right away, that's my Shure SM7B microphone. I don't have to wonder, is this the input that has this connected, something like that. I typically do this with my hardware outputs. So I do have some hardware effects and they're always connected to the same inputs and outputs. So I'll rename it to whatever that hardware is. It makes it so much easier when you have a lot more inputs and outputs and things connected. You don't have to remember everything because you label it in the alias section here. But you don't have to do that. You can just leave it as the default and be happy with it. Doesn't matter there. And now that we have our audio interface all set up and ready to go in waveform, we're going to move on to creating a project and we'll do that in the next video. So I'll see you there.